time that you need us from this day forward, we're just a phone call away. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. We shall not walk. He makes us to lie down in the green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. Restores our souls. He leads us in the pathways of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though we have to all walk through the valley in the shadows of death, we do not have to fear any evil, for God is with us. His rod and his staff, he will comfort us. Prayer is a table before us in the presence of our enemy. Anoints our head with oil. And our cup will run over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, and now and then forevermore shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. Family, we want you to know that you have prayers on the constant. You have my support whenever you need it. 
you have our love always. We're going to follow the program as it is printed. First, we have scripture and prayer. Then we have a selection. Acknowledgements by Tandra Brooks. Reading of the obituary. Remarks by Keyshawn and Deborah. Another selection by Anthony Christian and then the eulogy by Pastor F. Bruce Williams. For our scripture reading, <clears throat> I will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting at verse 51. And it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Let us pray. Father God, it is once again that we, a few of your children, come to you, leaning and depending on you for our help, because, Lord, we know that all of our help comes from you. <laughs> Father, we thank you right now for the life of this, your daughter, your child, Missy Lois. We thank you, Lord, for all the many wonderful things that you were able to accomplish through her life while she was on this side of the Jordan. We thank you, Lord, for what it is she has meant throughout the days and what she continues to mean even right now. Mm -hmm. We pray, dear Lord, that you will be with this family, these daughters, these siblings, and all who are connected to Miss Elois. Praying, Lord, that you will give them that peace that can only come from you. Yeah. That you will regulate their thoughts and minds in those moments when they start to doubt, in those moments when the enemy attacks them with lies, that you will help them to know mm -hmm. that you are still God and you are still in control. You still love them. And then, Lord, we pray that in those moments when they feel weak, that you will give them strength. In those moments when they feel like the void in their heart is too much for them, that you will help to fill it. And as you fill that void, Lord, that you will be that bomb that they need you to be to bring forth that healing. Mm -hmm. So that they are able to accept what you have allowed. Mm -hmm. And as they accept it, Lord, that they are know that even now, it's still important for all of us to stay focused with our minds and eyes on Jesus Christ because when we keep our eyes and minds on Jesus, it helps us to be able to navigate through this life, to do those things that we need to do to be who it is you have created us to be. And Lord, we just pray as we go forth into this homegoing celebration that you will be with each and every person who will stand at this podium at this mic 
that you will use them as you see fit mm -hmm. to bring forth your glory. And as you're bringing forth your glory, Lord, that you will edify those of us who are on the receiving end so that when we leave this place, we're all better people, better prepared to do what it is you have called and created us to do. Yeah. Lord, bless Pastor Williams with an extra dose of your grace, your mercy, so that when he stands here to say a word, that as he speaks, you are speaking through him, and as you're speaking through him, he comes to us in a way that is most meaningful. And we'll be ever careful to give you all the praise and glory and the honor that is due your name. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, we thank you once again. In the name of our Lord, our Savior, our big brother, and our friend, Jesus the Christ, let us all say amen. Amen. And thank God. Amen.
2021. No matter what your trial your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He will go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. We the family. We, the members of Faith Memorial Baptist Church, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to bat. Sister Eloise Clyburn, goodbye. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadows, grass, and leaves me. Beside the quiet streams, your goodness and unfailing kindness should be with me all my life and I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever whereas Sister Clyburn was a caring and helpful person who loved the Lord and her family whereas Sister Clyburn regularly worshipped at the 10 o'clock services until she became ill and was unable to attend. God looked around his garden and found on an empty place. He looked down upon the earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew that you were suffering he knew you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. He broke, it broke our hearts to lose you. But you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you the day we called you home. Whereas on Saturday, April the 21st, 2021, God called Elise, Elois, Jeannie, Clyde, born home. We shall miss her. But she is where we all long to be, resting eternally in the Master's arms. May the peace and comfort of God be with you during this time of sorrow, humbly submitted by the order of Bates Memorial Baptist Church on the 30th of April, 2021, under the leadership of Pastor F. Bruce Lee. Thank you. And that's when I remember meeting Jeannie. And immediately she had this effect on my heart. I can't tell you what it was, but I was just gravitated to her. And I thought she was so beautiful. And um, so then we had two other gatherings and I was able to see her. Then after that, I didn't see her anymore. And then the last time I saw her was like 2018. But all in between that time, I would text my cousin Nene and say, Please tell your beautiful mother that I said hi. 
I said hello and tell her that I love her. I never forgot to do that because Jeannie had an effect on me that I can't explain to you. So I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to go to the hospital to see her before she passed. And I was able to express that same thing that I'm expressing to you. I was able to express that to her. I'm so grateful for that. And when Nene called me and asked me if I would do the acknowledgments, I was really kind of stunned. I wasn't thinking anything like that. So I am very, very elated and very, very honored to stand here today to do this for my family. The family of the late Eloise Jeannie Clyburn would like to thank their many family and friends for the acts of kindness shown during the death of their loved one. May God continue to bless and keep each of you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nation and Sister Tanya. At this time, we have the silent reading of the obituary. She was so loving, and she was crazy. I ain't gonna lie. 
<laughs> when I say that, I mean like you read in the obituary, never had a driver's license, worked for over 40 years, but somehow she ain't got no social media. Somehow she stays in contact with every single person in this room. <laughs> somehow she talks to everybody in here, has touched everybody in here to, to, at some point to make y'all show up and come in and you know show her show her love today and. I don't see this as a sad day. That's right. probably why I haven't shed a tear because it's honestly a celebration. Um, I thank God for letting us have this short time. You know, it's only a short time. I know we look at it in 66 years. That's a long time. That's a short time of her lifetime, but that's um, what she's going to enjoy in heaven. It's going to be great. She's going to get to see her uh, grandson, Kiki. She's going to get to see her father and mother for the first time in a while, her past siblings. So that always feels good. And I say that to say, as crazy as she was, and like I said, just staying in contact with everybody, as a family, I feel like that's something that we have to do. Yeah. We always come together in these times when somebody's passed and in sad times, but we have such a big family that I feel like we need to take initiative and come together so we don't see a decline, you know, within the last six months or two weeks of somebody's life. You see them in that state, and that's the last memory you have of them. I think together we have a big enough family and enough loving people that we can come together and really be with each other. Because I'm not going to lie, it's cut a small piece out of my heart. But all of y'all being here helps fill that that void that I felt when she passed. I was in the car on my way to the hospital and they called me. So I called and she called and was like, hey. Janice called me and was like, hey, if y'all were still going to come up, she did pass. And I was like, of course I'm coming. No matter what, of course I'm going to show up. But I think... Like I said, I say all that to say, if anything, today, I want today to be the start of it. And I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. I don't reach out to everybody as well. And I've realized that as an adult now that we make plenty of excuses. Oh, I'm working all the time. Oh, I'm always busy. Oh, I got to go to this. I got to go to that. We have to make time for family because we don't know how much time we're going to have. So, I, I, I feel we should. I should give y'all a homework assignment. <laughs> Nobody here is going to before everybody leaves today, before everybody leaves today, I would like, you know, everybody to get somebody, a phone number from somebody in your contact that you haven't talked to in six months. Somebody in your family that you haven't spoken to in six months because I know there's plenty of people in here that I haven't myself. And I think that's a start to us growing together as a family and yeah. continuing to grow and just be loved. I love her so much. I'm I'm so glad she's done with pain. Yes. Amen. I'm so glad Amen. she's done with all of that. But like I said, I, I just want to, wanted to get up here and speak for her because I felt like that's something that she's always done is keep everybody connected. And I want to love y'all the same way that she loved y'all. Oh, I don't want to lose that connection. And because she was so special, that's the reason that I stand before you all feeling both joy and pain. Joy because I know that Jeannie is in the presence of the Lord. And pain because she is going to be missed so much by all of us. And she was the one who always initiated everything, facilitated everything, got the family gatherings together. She did it all. So as, as Keyshawn said, somebody's going to have to step up and fill that void because it will be there. Jeannie was a loving person. And everybody, the, the lady who said uh, when she met her how she had that effect on her, she had that effect on everybody she came in the presence of. She was, uh, she just made people feel like they were so special. Didn't you, you know, you guys think about a time when you were with her and how she impacted your life. Just think about that for a minute. She always made you feel good, you know? And for me, I feel like she was always very, very caring. She was fun loving, she was honest, and she was so, 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 so sharing. 
And she used to always tell me whenever I told her I was going to do something, I'll let you chip in on this or that or whatever. She said, I got five on it. No matter what it was, I got five on it, you know. Yeah, but she uh, was just, she was a wise person, uh, very observant, and she would share her wisdom with you. And those of you all who know, with or without permission, okay? <laughs> and she was unapologetic. You like it or you don't. And then when you got too far out there, she would be like, mm-mm, oh. you know. And you, know, you knew what that meant. Okay, I better reel it on in some. So, um, you know, I just ask myself that every time we have a funeral or something, Jeannie would always say, Pinky, get up there. You better say something. You better say something. And I'm like, mm-mm. So I'm like, what would she want me to say to you all today? If she could be here right now standing in my stead, this is one thing I know she would say. Don't want me to come back because I wouldn't if I could. If God gave me the choice, my choice is to stay right here with him. She would not come back. And everybody out there, you know that you were loved, but I ain't coming back, okay? <laughs> so I said, since Jeannie had a strong faith and she loved talking about the Lord because we talked about him often, mm -hmm. I decided that she would want me to share with you all right now that she is safe in his presence. She's mm -hmm. good, okay? So, you know, we're going to miss her for a moment, but we do have to let her go. And you don't be looking at me at the corner of your eye like, oh, my Lord, she turned the page. So, but it's all good. Because so, she was been like, oh, Lord. But um, in the, the work, in Ecclesiastes 7-1, it says, a good name is better than fine perfume, and the day of one's death is better than the day of his birth. Now you think, oh my gosh, how could that be so? And you know, we feeling all this, whatever we're feeling, you know. But he's, God said in his word, the day of one's death is better than the day of his birth. Now why do you reckon he said that? If it's not true, because we say we're Christians, we profess the Lord, we know his word is true. Why did he say a man's death it's better than his birth. And it's because the day you die is the day you really store living. That's the day you cross over into your eternity and that's what matters. This does not matter. It's what's coming next. And so we all got to do what? Get ourselves together so we can do what? Get to what's coming next. Get to where she is because I know that's where she is, okay? So I want to get there. So I said, how do you feel? How do you get there, though? The word says, blessed is the man who dies in the Lord. I know that to be true. Blessed is the man who dies in the Lord. You know, so to be saved, what do I have to do to be saved? How do we get to there? We're saved by God's grace through faith. Through faith in what? Faith in him. And we're so ignorant that we don't know what to believe or how to believe it. So the only thing we can believe about God is what God says about himself. Because you ain't smart enough to figure it out. So you got to figure out, okay, Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you want me to believe? So in Romans 10, 9 through 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's a promise from God. If you believe in your heart that God has raised Christ, God in the flesh, from I hope I'm not preaching your son. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, okay. But if you believe that, that God promises us one, that we shall be saved. For with the heart there is believing unto righteousness, and with the mouth there is confession unto salvation. So that's all I wanted to say. Just every time I get up and get to speak something, God says, hey, you throw me in there somewhere. So I'm putting him out there and saying it. That's all you have to do to be saved. What? Believe in your heart and confess it. And you shall be saved. And so then guess what? You get to see Angie again one day. Thank you all so much. Thank you.
crystal fountain whence the healing waters flow. Let thy fiery cloudy pillar guide us all our journey through bread of heaven. Feed us till we want no more. Bread of heaven. Feed us till we want no more. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. We give honor and praise to God who is always, in every situation, worthy to be praised. And even now, God is still God and God is still good. And so we give God the praise, honor, and the glory. We want to say also on behalf of myself and my wife, Michelle, and the Bates Memorial family, we want to say to you, this family, that we offer you our deepest condolences. And if there's anything we can do, not just now, but in the days ahead, please do not hesitate to call on us. And that's not just preacher talk. We really do mean uh, that we're here for you and we will do everything we can to minister. And if we can't do it, we'll try to find somebody who can. Um, I have been blessed so far by this uh, homegoing celebration of the remarks uh, that have been given uh, and um, the eulogy that has already been given <laughs> uh, by both the persons who have come forward to give the remarks. To eulogize someone means to speak well of them. And uh, she has been spoken well of, um, but it's not difficult to speak well of someone who's lived well. I grew up in a church uh, in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, a little church um, where we used to have devotion. You don't do that anymore, but the service began with deacons in the front who would read scripture and sing and pray. And um, I can still hear some of the deacons' prayers. Whenever the deacons would pray, they would pray the same prayer, almost word for word. So we uh, as kids had their prayers memorized yeah. and almost inevitably at the end of the prayers uh, one deacon would always end up at the text where he says I want to hear you say well done uh -huh. thou good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few things come on I'll make you rule over many enter into the joy of the Lord prepared from the foundation of the world always ended that prayer, I want to hear you say, well done. In fact, any of the deacons who would pray, whatever they prayed would end up coming there. Lord, I want to hear you say, well done. And I'd like to remind the members of Base Memorial that if you want to hear God say, well done, you've got to well do. Yes, sir. And we're here believing that Sister Jeannie heard the Lord say, well done, because indeed she did well. And so I'm almost tempted, um, after all those remarks, to just get up and say what they said. Yeah. <laughs> and just give a benediction because they did such a marvelous job. Amen. And the sister attempted to apologize for telling people how to be saved. I was like, go on, sister, say what the Lord put on your heart to say. Because you never know who's listening. And oftentimes it is at a moment like this when we are reminded that it is not life that is certain and death uncertain, but it is life that is uncertain because death is sure. We are not in the land of the living on our way to the land of the dying. We're in the land of the dying. And if you know Jesus, you're on your way to the land of the living. So we don't talk about death in mixed company, but it is moments like this that remind us that everyone has to go the way of death. No one gets out of this world alive. No one. Uh, but you can make sure that you end up in the best place. The sisters already told us how to be saved, and in if you reduce it down to this irreducible essence, it's not uh, what you know, but it's who you know that determines your eternal destiny. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that that's the criteria, because if the criteria was to live a perfect life, nobody would make it. 
I should get more amens than that. Amen. Aren't you glad that it's not because of you, but because of the finished work of Christ yes, on Calvary yes, that gives us access to eternity? I'm glad about that. And so Sister Jeannie has lived her life, and there's nothing that I say or fail to say that can add to or take away from her life. And so I'm not here simply to talk about Sister Jeannie as much as I'm here to talk about those who talk to those she has left behind to try to say something that would help us navigate the days ahead without her physical presence. There are many and myriad passages of scripture that would have been appropriate for this moment. I think that God has given me this passage to share with you today. And so I want to do what I believe the Lord has laid on my heart to do briefly and then we'll be done. In the book of Acts, Acts chapter 9, there is a passage of scripture beginning with verse 36. And I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Greek Masoretic Text in Acts 9, beginning with verse 36. There's a story about a woman that I want to read that I think is appropriate for the moment. It reads, in Joppa there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good, helping the poor. About that time she became sick and died. The body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the window, all the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with him. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Amen. Such is the reading of God's word. And with the help of the Holy Spirit in your prayers, I just want to talk to you from this simple theme, a life that never ends. A life that never ends. The passage I share with you comes from the book of Acts. It bears the name of Acts. For some, that name Acts means the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And that is what the Holy Spirit did through the church. For others, the book of Acts means the Acts of the Apostles, of the great works that God had done through the lives of people like Peter or even the Apostle Paul. And because of that predisposition to thinking of the book of Acts that way, usually we miss out on the fact that not only were there Acts of the Holy Spirit or Acts of great men in church history, but there were also explicitly or implicitly acts of others, some named and some unnamed, without which, whose actions without which the church would never have survived or thrived or even grown. Some miracles would never have taken place if these named or unnamed persons had not been faithful. Certain things would never have taken place or happened. Others would never have been affected by the gospel if it had not been for others who did not hold a great title or have a household name. Some of those persons were pe people who were known as the Amharits or the people of the land, just common everyday people, people who don't get center stage, people who don't get the spotlight, people whose name does not fall freely off the lips of the populace, people who don't show up in publications with amazing regularity, people who don't get the privilege of having their picture on the front page of some popular magazine. People like that, the common people. And someone has said that God must really love common people because he made so many of them. Most people are not famous. Most people don't have titles. Most people are just common, everyday people. But if we would just stop 
and take note and recognize that much of what happens in the world would never happen and much of what happened in our lives would never be impacted if it were not for just common everyday people. In our text today we have the testimony of the impact that a woman had who was no great woman with no great titles. We have no information in her background or bio data that she was rich or prominent or popular at all. There's no indication that she had some societal prestige. What we know of her is that she had an impact on people's lives. So much so that when she died, they felt the impact. And the reason why I'm leaning on this point so hard is because whenever I read that passage of scripture, I'm thinking about why we're here today. We're here today because there's someone who is not popular or prestigious, didn't have titles or degrees, but somehow lived a life that made such an impact on people's lives that they will never be forgotten. We're here to celebrate the homegoing of Sister Gina, Jeannie, and we know that all the persons whose lives have been touched and impact are not in this room right now. But there are many people who came through and who wanted to come and wish they could come and could not come who have been impacted by our lives. In fact, there are people whose lives she has impacted that she doesn't even know she impacted and you don't even know that she's impacted only they and god knows the kind of impact that she has had on their lives so i see a powerful parallel if you will between the life of dorcas of tabitha the text and miss Jeannie and her life as well i won't keep you long the first thing i want you to notice that the bible says about tabitha that is also true about Sister Jean is that the Bible calls her a disciple. That's the word that the NIV uses. It says a disciple named Tabitha. Now, I don't know how you feel about that, but that sounds like something special to me if you know what a disciple is. A disciple is an unashamed follower of the sandals wearing carpenter from Galilee. It, it, a disciple is a learner, someone who has committed themselves to Christ, someone who trusts the finished work of Christ on Calvary and has made a commitment to follow him from time into eternity. Someone who trusts Christ so much that they not only trust what he did on Calvary, but they trust every word that comes out of his mouth. In fact, not only do they trust every word, but they live off of every word that comes out of the mouth of Christ. That is who a disciple is. A disciple isn't someone who just wears a t-shirt that has a disciple. A disciple isn't simply one who just claims to be a disciple because anybody can fake being a disciple verbally. A disciple is someone who walks out their relationship with Christ in their everyday life. And listen, my brothers and sisters, you can say that you're an apple tree all you want, but no one will know if you're an apple tree if they never see any apples on the limbs. Somebody said you can tell a tree about the fruit it bears, not by the bark it wears. It don't matter what kind of clothes they have, it's what kind of fruit their lives produce. And the reason why we are happy, sad in here today, the reason why we can celebrate even though we may be suffering from the pain of her loss is because we know that Sister Cheney bore fruit in her life. She was a disciple of Jesus Christ. I should be getting more help than I'm getting right now. She was a follower of Jesus. Maybe y'all not hear me. I didn't say she was perfect. I didn't say she did everything right. I didn't say everything she did pleased her or God. I said that she was an unashamed follower of Jesus Christ. And that's what makes her life special. Yeah. is because she sought to live a life that mimicked the life of Jesus and a life that pleased God and a life that blessed others. Yeah. She was a disciple. And I got a sneaking suspicion that there are some people who made a decision to be a follower of Jesus because of her example. Yeah, yeah I bet you there's some people who were trying to decide whether they were going to follow Jesus or not 
and as a consequence of a relationship with someone who was following Jesus, decided one day to get up from church and make that walk down the aisle and say yes to Jesus, finally. Ain't that good news? Which means that she has left behind a legacy of faith that she has passed down to generations. And listen, there's a lot of things you can pass down. I mean, people nowadays are talking about passing wealth down, and that's important. It's good to have something to pass down. But uh, even the wealth that people are talking about, cars, cash, clothes, cribs, are they have their place. Uh, but there's some things that money can't buy. Right. 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 Come on, you can buy a house, but it can't buy a home. That's right. It, it can buy sex, but it came by love. It can buy company, but it came by companionship. That's right. That's right. It can buy drugs that will give you a synthetic sense of euphoria, but it came by peace. That surpasses all understanding. It can buy a coat that can make you warm on the outside, but not the Holy Ghost that can make you hot on the inside. It can buy you a bed, but not a good night's sleep. It can buy you a steak, but not the ability to digest it. It can buy you a car, but it won't guarantee your life will go anywhere. There's some things that stuff can't buy. It's all right to hand that down, but if it's better to hand down things that don't spoil with time. And she's handing down faith in Jesus Christ, a legacy of disciples who decided to make Jesus their choice. And so we're here to celebrate because she was a follower of Jesus, and because of the consequence and influence of her life, other people decided to say yes to the living Lord. The second thing I want you to notice in the text is that when she died, they missed her. That seems like a simple thing, and why would I point out the obvious in the text? But here's what's true to human experience. Everybody who's di who dies is not missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we would just be all the way 100, there's some people, when we see them coming, we're glad to see them. And there's some other people, when they come, we're glad when they're leaving. Yeah. Everybody is not missed. There are some people who die and life just goes on and nobody notices. Because everybody doesn't live a life that impacts others. There are some people who live an aggressively self-centered life. Their the three favorite friends are me, myself, and I. They don't think about the lives of other people, so they live solely for themselves. And if you're not careful, this culture will teach you that that's the best way to live, to look out for number one, to, uh, uh, to do uh, unto others before they do unto you. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but Tabitha in the text, she lived a life blessing other people. In fact, when she died, they were weeping so hard that when Peter got there, they were showing Peter all of the things she had given them. The deposits that Tabitha had made in the lives of other people that made their lives better. And the reason why there's so many people in here today, even during COVID-19, is because Miss Jeannie made deposits in people's lives. Some of them tangible and some of them intangible. I, I was reading the, 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 the program and noticed that she used her gifts to make things, her creativity to make things for others. So some of you perhaps have tokens of her love in your possession. There's something she made for you that was an expression of her care and love for you. It's not her care and love, it's the symbol of the substance of her care and love. So so she, you have something in your possession that she gave you that reminds uh, you of her. But there are some intangible things mm -hmm. that you have as well. The sister stood up here and said that she had an impact on her that she will never forget. Well, she wasn't talking about something you can touch with your fingers. Right, right, right. She wasn't talking about something you can taste with your mouth. She she was talking about something that happens on the inside when when deep speaks to deep, when the God in you speaks to the God in somebody else. And when they have that kind of impact on your life, it's hard to verbalize. There's not enough language in the human lexicon to describe the impact that they have, but they have that impact stays even when they are no longer physically with you, that deposit stays in you. Yes, sir. You know, somebody said that the uh, our memory is like an addict in an old house. 
uh, in, in an old house, the attic is the place where you put uh, trinkets and photo albums and and things that remind you of days gone by, the relationship you've had with others, the good times you've had. And every now and then, you can go up in the attic and rummage around and remember, uh, have memories of people that you love. Mm -hmm. And uh, our memories are like that. Even though she's no longer physically with you, you know that since she's had an impact in your life that there are going to be times in the future that you're going to climb up in the attic of your mind mm. and rummage around those memories. And when you start reflecting on those memories, those images are going to become so vivid in your imagination and in your memory that you're going to start feeling the emotions of the moment, even though it happened 5, 10, 15 years ago. Thank God for our memory. Yeah. God has given us a gift of memory so that we can climb up and relive days gone by. She's made deposits in your lives and you miss when she's gone because she did something with the life that she had. Someone said, the brother said her life was brief. It, it was indeed. The Bible says we get three score years and 10 and if by reason of strength we get four score years. In other words, you get about 70, 75 years and if you get any more, you own your overtime. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She lived 60, what, 66, 67 years. So life is fragile, it's brief. But what's important is not how much of it you have. Mm -hmm. What's important is what you do with what you have. Yeah. It's not the length of life, but it's the depth of life. Not the quantity, but the quality of life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like to remind people when they talk about Methuselah. Methuselah's claim to fame in the Bible. And even if you don't read the Bible, you know who Methuselah was. Methuselah has the claim to fame of being the one who lived longer than anyone else in the world, 969 years. That's a long time. The Bible says he lived for 969 years. So that's what Methuselah is known for, for living for 969 years. But that's the only thing that the Bible says about Methuselah. Is that he lived for 900 years. 69 years. Doesn't say that he helped send anybody to college. Doesn't say he mentored any men or women. It doesn't say he helped any poor. It doesn't say he tried to help someone who was in need. It doesn't say that he did anything that made life better for others. It just said that he hung around longer than anyone else. And ain't nothing wrong with hanging around a while, but if you hang around that long, and there's no record of any impact you've had on anybody's life that you just sucked up air and took up space. It's better to live shorter and deeper than it is to live longer and shallow. That's why he lived 969 years and that's all you know about him. But Jesus lived for 33 years and he lived so well that he split history into AD and BC so that every time you date something, you gotta date it by his birthday. Somebody ought to say amen here. That's the example we have laying before us. Her life was one that made an impact so that when she passed, people miss her. The seat at the table that's going to be empty will remind people that she's missed. The third thing, and then I'm almost finished, the third thing I want you to notice about what the text says about Tabitha that is also true about Miss Jeannie is that not only was she a disciple, not only was she missed, but the Bible says she died, but she didn't stay dead. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the book says that she died and they sent for Peter, he was in Lida, uh, close by, so they sent for Peter. And when Peter heard about it, he got on his knees and he started praying. I, I don't even know what he prayed. If you let me tune on the frequency of creativity, I can imagine that Peter must have said, you know, uh, these people in here need somebody like Tabitha and there's not many people around here like her. So Lord, I know she died, but could you give her just a few more years to make an impact on the people's lives here. And so he prayed and God honored his prayer. He took over to Tabitha and said, Tabitha, get up. Breath came back in her body, her eyes opened. She sat up 
The Bible says Peter grabbed her by the hand and lifted her and then called all the other people in mm -hmm. and said, the one you was worried about, <laughs> she ain't dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's alive. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to suggest to you that what Miss Jeannie has in common with Tabitha is that she died, but she didn't stay dead. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Death had her, but it couldn't hold her. Right, right. The grave tried to get her, but it can't keep her. Yeah. What I'm suggesting to you is that when you die in Christ, as the sister said earlier, mm -hmm. death for the Christian is not death. It's departure yes, yes, to a better place. Yes, God takes us out of this limited womb to call time and puts before us in eternity, which puts before us limitless possibilities. We were not meant for this world to be the only life we have. Paul said, if this world is all there is, we are men and women most miserable. God's intent is not for us to die and be eternally separated from God, but God's intent is for us to live in eternity with God forever. And there are too many clues, y'all, that this world, there's got to be more to this yes. than this world. Yes. Let me give you an, ex an example, uh, an analogy that gives you insight that there's more to life than just time. There's got to be another life, eternity. And, and the analogy is birth. It's, it's when a woman gets pregnant. When a woman finds out she gets pregnant, then life begins to, to expand in her womb. Mm -hmm. A child is born and begins to grow in the womb of a woman. And in that womb world, the baby starts to develop. Mm -hmm. But if you pay attention to what's developing in the womb, you'll realize that the baby's eternal destiny is not designed to stay in the womb. Right, right. Because the baby gets fingers. And what you need for fi fingers in a womb? Baby develops eyes to see. What do you need eyes in a womb for? Mm -hmm. Baby develops lungs to breathe air. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the baby doing with lungs in a womb? Mm -hmm. Everything that is happening in the womb suggests that it's happening to prepare the baby for another world. So that after the third trimester, the baby leaves the womb world and comes into the world of time. And you realize that all that development was not for the womb, it was for the world. And what I'm suggesting to you is that God has us in this limited room called time. His intent is to use time to develop us for another world. Yeah, and yeah, when yeah. our due date comes, and nobody knows when the day is, but it is on the way, because death comes without the privilege of cancellation. If you are a Christian, you don't die, you just breathe in another world. You come to another reality, and God wants us to spend it with Him in eternity. And that's why you can shout even while you're suffering. That's why we can pray God in the middle of our pain because she didn't die. She just changed addresses. The Bible says if this earthly tabernacle dissolved, I got another building. Yeah. Yeah. Eternal in the heavens yeah. and not made by hand. All the while you thought she was dying. And all the while, God was preparing her for another world. That's why Paul said, don't feel sorry for me because I'm falling apart on the outside because this body was never meant to last forever in the first place. He said, while I'm dying on the outside, God is building me up on the inside. Yeah, well, see, all you could see was what you could see. You saw her body get sick. You saw her body get weak. You saw her steps get short. You saw her grimace at the pain. But the other day... God gave her lead from all of that. And now she's got a new body. Yes. And she's in a new world. Yes. 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 No more pain. Yes. No more sickness. Yes. No more death. Yes. No more bills. Yes. No more haters. Yes. She's in the land of endless days. Yes. Yes. She's where her so long to be. Yes. Safe in the arms of God. Yes. Yes. Uh, Sister mentioned earlier while she was here, uh, she said um, she wouldn't come back if you if you asked her. She wouldn't come back. That's what she said. I believe her too. She wouldn't come back. But listen, let me add something. 
she wouldn't come back here, but she would want you to one day end up where she is. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And often when we talk about the other world, we talk about how now they get to see loved ones who passed, and that's absolutely right. But that's not the main attraction of heaven. The main attraction of heaven is not that you get to see mom and them again. You do get to see that, and that's a wonderful thing. But that's not the main attraction. Because, see, the main attraction is the one who made it possible for you to cross That's over right. in the first place. That's right. And so I got a daddy, and I got a mama, and I got kinfolk in heaven. But when I get to heaven, they're not the first person I'm going to be looking for. Right. The first person I'm going to be looking for is the one who made eternal life possible to me. Right. And when I see him, I'm going to fall down at his feet and tell him, thank you. Yes. Y'all don't hear me for making it possible for somebody like me to make it to the other side. And I got a sneaking suspicion that when Miss Jeannie got to the other side, she wasn't looking for kinfolk at first. She said, I need to go where the throne place is. If there's anybody seen Jesus before I talk to anybody, I want to talk to the lover of my soul. Yeah, yeah. And when she got there, he said, well done. Yeah. Thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. Been faithful over a few things. Come higher. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Prepare from the foundation of the world. The joy. <laughs> this joy she had, the world didn't give it, and the world couldn't take it away. Yes, yeah, she's in a far better place. Where she longed to be. Go on, Sister Jeannie. Go on and walk the streets. <laughs> go on and get in the choir. I don't know if they let you in the choir at pitch, but you go on and get in the choir up there. <laughs> let you sing in the choir up there. Go on and visit who you want to visit. And take your time. Because you've got all of eternity. Go on and enjoy yourself. You've suffered enough. Now it's time for you to enter into the bliss of God. And even though you didn't have names like St. Peter or the Apostle Paul, you're enjoying as much of the joy as both of those. Yeah. Yeah. But remember, Miss Jean, you can't crown him till we get there. That's right. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Miss Jean on loan to us. Thank you for letting us have her for as long as we did. Thank you for letting us borrow her. She really doesn't ultimately belong to us. She belongs to you. And so you can come and get her whenever you want it. Thank you for letting us have her for the time that we did. Thank you for her example as a disciple. Thank you for the fact that she made such an impact that we feel the vacuum in our hearts because she's missed. But thank you, O oh God, that we know by faith that there's no grave big enough to hold her. That the other day she passed by the grave and said, Oh, death, where is your sting? <laughs> oh, grave, where is your victory? Miss G has the victory now. And we thank you. Take care of her for us until we see you and her in that great kid up in the morning. In the meantime, oh God, I pray for those she leaves behind. I pray that you would activate the comforting ministry of your Holy Spirit, that they would move and minister to the hearts and minds and lives of these who are gathered here. I pray that your grace would be the glue that holds this family together. I pray, oh God, that they will not turn on each other, but turn to each other in the days ahead. We thank you ahead of time for the answer to that prayer. And as always, God, I want you to remind them that in the days ahead, when it gets dark, as they're contemplating this loss, remind them, oh God, that the darkness is not evidence of the ab your absence, but the darkness is the shadow of your arm as you pull them closer to your chest. We pray this prayer in the name of he who died but did not stay dead. In the
the name of the crucified, resurrected, reigning and soon returning Christ's name we pray. All who agree with that prayer, say amen. Amen. If I can have all Paul Bear stuff for it, please.